so today we are learning about SMI which deals with identification of Campylobacter species so let us start so family Campylobacter SCA it has four close related genera first is Campylobacter itself Archobacter Dehalospirillium and Sulfurospirillium so Campylobacter, Archobacter, Dehalospirillium and Sulfurospirillium out of which we are going to talk about today Campylobacter now <laughs> Campylobacter 2 species Jejuni and Coli they are the leading cause of bacterial gastroenteritis in humans worldwide so this is a very important uh, aspect <laughs> And there are certain under-recognized nutritionally fastidious species like Concisus, Upsalinensis and Ureoliticus which are emerging nowadays uh, as cause of gastroenteritis, irritable bowel disorder and periodontitis. And in some instances they cause life-threatening extra gastrointestinal diseases also. So let us first see about the microscopic morphology. So they are gram-negative curved spiral or s shaped so they are curved spiral or s shaped bacteria if uh, suboptimal condition culture is there or older culture is there you can see the cocoid form also it has a single polar unsheathed flagella so there is a single polar unsheathed flagellum at one or either and so one or both hands you can see this flagella and that's why the motility is a darting motility so we have in darting motility basically vibrio cholerae and uh, campylobacter two bacteria are there and it can be detected by phase contrast micro microscopy so that is about the microscopy of this bacteria if we talk about the culture condition so they are basically fastidious bacteria uh, under strict anaerobic or micro aerophilic environment that is basically 5 to 10 percent oxygen 5 to 10 percent co2 is required for recovery <coughs> uh, c consists curvus gracilis mucosalis rectus shovi and some strains of hyointestinalis they require hydrogen also so we have to add three to seven percent h2 into uh, atmosphere for growing them the optimum temperature is 37 to 42 they usually all grow at 37 but uh, the pathogenic thermophilic strain they usually grow at 42 degrees centigrade we use a selective agar uh, charcoal sifoperazone deoxycholate agar this is blood free medium and this is basically used and it yields the highest isolation rate for campylobacter and it gives you gray white or creamy gray colony and moist in nature and it sometimes appear as a layer of growth what we know as uh, swarming uh, on the agar on blood agar you will see translucent moist colonies and uh, after a few days of anaerobic growth you will see pitting of agar so this is about the culture condition of campylobacter uh, when we talk about uh, identification then it is having a strict respiratory metabolism it does not ferment or oxidize carbohydrate uh, all species are oxidase positive so this is very important all campylobacter they are oxidase positive and they are negative for indole and vogus brusca so indole is negative and vogus brusca is negative and oxidase is positive and most species they reduce nitrate and hydrolyze uh, hyperesis uh, hyperate uh, is negative so this is all and this is most that means some species may not reduce nitrate and some species may hydrolyze hyperate that is the meaning of that there are lack of effective discriminating tastes to differentiate species and uh, dire illness in humans uh, they are usually caused by the thermophilic strain which usually grows at 42 degrees centigrade and 37 but they usually don't grow at 25 degrees centigrade so this is an important differentiating point <coughs> the type species is campylobacter fetus and this organism has been isolated from feces and blood as well as other sterile body sites as well as intestinal tract brain abscess urine wounds and oral cavity <coughs> 
The medically important two species which are very common is coli and jejuni. Uh, coli is 42 degrees centigrade uh, as well as the jejuni is also 42. So both are thermophilic species. Uh, both does not grow at 25. So both are thermophilic. Uh, they do not grow at 25. It also does not grow at 25. And both are oxidase positive and catalase positive. So both are catalase and oxidase positive. Now, then how to differentiate them? So this is nitrate reduction negative and hippurate uh, hydrolysis also negative. While this is hippurate hydrolysis positive. So Campylobacter jejuni is hippurate hydrolysis positive. So we have to keep in mind. Now jejuni is also having two subspecies. One is doily and another is jejuni. So this is doily and jejuni, how we can differentiate is that doily is uh, nitrate uh, reduction taste positive. So it can reduce nitrate while jejuni cannot. Now there are certain technical limitations uh, that we have to talk about. First of all, when you are using Malditov, the, you should not use selective culture medium that is charcoal cefaperazone deoxycholate because it will give you poor spectral output. That means you need to have additional agar, usually blood agar, uh, prior to definitive eradication of Malditov. So when you pick up colony for Malditov, it should be from non-selective media. Gram stain, it is not easily visualized by sephronin. So alternate is that you extend the duration of sephronin up to 10 minutes or you use alternative stain that is carbofuscin or 0.1% aqueous basic fishing. So there are three alternatives for solving this problem. Agar media, we know that we add so many antimicrobial agents to make the medium selective, especially cephalosporin, cephalothene, cholestein, polymyxin. They are inhibitory to many strains of jejuni and coli, as well as the emerging strain like upsalinensis, hyointestinalis, and fetus. And that's why we always use selective as well as non-selective both medium to grow campylobacter uh, oxidase is usually positive but if you are using a colony from dextrose or sucrose or glucose containing medium it will give you weak oxidase reaction that's why it should always be done from a medium without dextrose and glucose and blood agar is sufficient to pick up that colony as I already told you, 42 degrees centigrade is the routine uh, temperature, but it may be inhibited to non-thermophilic, that is, which grow at 25 degrees centigrade species, which can also be associated with gastroenteritis. For example, concissus, rectus, curvus, gracilis, shovi, they require incubation in hydrogen-enriched microaerophilic uh, atmosphere. So, this species require hydrogen. Commercial identification is not that much accurate. Uh, serological testing it interestingly show cross reaction with Legionella pneumophila, so it gives false positive with Legionella. So that also we have to keep in mind. It is a hazard group two pathogen. Its infectious dose is 500 microgram or 500 organism. Sorry by ingestion. So its ID is 500 bacteria if your root is ingestion and it can cause laboratory acquired infections so all precautions should be taken now which are the species of importance to us uh, basically human gastrointestinal species and human dental infection so if you see human gastrointestinal then obviously jejuni and coli they predominate fetus can also cause this iointestinalis putorum why i mentioned this separately because this five species jejuni coli fetus iointestinalis and sputorum can also cause extra intestinal infection but Larry, Helveticus, Upsalinensis, Hominis, Gracilis, Lanine, Peloridus and Insulinagere this is a very tough name Insulinigre this species can also cause gastrointestinal infection while dental infection they are caused by Concissus, Curvus, Rectus, Shovi and Urolyticus now interestingly if you see these are the species which were uh, requiring uh, the hydrogen. So uh, you can remember that these are the hydrogen requiring species. So identification based on gram stain. Now we know it is curved or S shaped or gull wing shaped bacteria. We have to use carbofuscin, aqueous basophuscin or 
Cephalin in for 10 minutes for that. Uh, we use CCDA charcoal cefoperazon deoxycholate agar 42 degree 48 hour as well as blood agar or fastidious anaerobic agar for 42 and 48 hour. This is good if you are using uh, it from diarrheal or fecal samples then obviously these are usually thermophilic strain and you should grow them at 42. But the sample is blood culture, then they are incubated at 37 because it could be due to anything. And this species can also grow at 37 degrees centigrade. So always selective and non-selective both are grown. On CCD agar you will see grey white moist colonies and on blood agar or fastidious anaerobic agar you will see translucent and moist colonies. Oxidase is usually positive but if you get oxidase negative and clinically you are suspecting that this could be Campylobacter and other features. Or reactions are indicating towards it then you should do subculture on blood agar and then retaste after 24 hours of incubation so this I think is a very important point serological tastes are very useful for epidemiological investigations and they are not recommended for routine diagnosis Mildetope, I already told you that you should pick colonies from non selective medium PCR is useful mainly to differentiate three main pathogenic species jejun E. coli and fetus and it detects cytolethal distending toxin CDT gene. Uh, PFGE, MLST uh, as well as uh, WGS they are all important for identification and subtyping of various campylobacter species. Uh, when we want to send it for further identification to reference lab, we use a pure isolate and we send it on a charcoal transport swab. So this is a summary of entire thing. Uh, if you have a clinical specimen, then your primary isolation plates are CCDA, that is uh, uh, cefoperazone. look at the name again it's tough one charcoal cefoperazone deoxycholate agar so c stands for charcoal cefoperazone deoxycholate agar so either you use uh, ccda or blood agar medium or fastidious anaerobic but you have to use both and you grow them micro aerobically or micro aerophilic environment to provide and for 42 degree centigrade for 48 hours you have to keep on this you will get moist gray moist colony and here translation moist colony then you should do gram staining and you will see grams uh, negative curved as shape bacteria the next uh, thing that you will do is oxidase taste and that we are usually expect positive if it is negative don't just go for that okay it would not be uh, campylobacter if clinical features and colony are resembling then you should subculture to blood agar and retaste after 24 hour so oxidase is usually positive then further identification is as and when required so you can use commercial id Marditov for biochemical reaction so that's it for today for campylobacter uh, please subscribe to this channel for more frc path medical microbiology tutorials i will be posting the detailed curriculum uh, on this channel so uh, do subscribe to the channel so that you get regular updates i hope you like this video if you learn to more uh, learn to um, you want to learn more topics about this exam just let me know in the comments and i will make those videos and make available to you thank you very much